Yeah. Okay, I think we're going to go ahead. Uh, thank you everybody for coming. I just felt this would be a lot easier to do with a whole bunch of you rather than 15 people coming into my office at different times and me saying the same thing over and over again. Uh, what I'm looking at right here is my, my UW page, and I've got all my stuff. There is a panel on there, or it may not be on there, and you may have to add it by going to that little hamburger menu on the top and browsing the applications. Uh, there's one called Black Web Conferencing Blackboard, which is right here. And if I click on Collaborate Ultra, it is going to open up the Blackboard Collaborate Ultra panel. Okay, and first thing I'm going to do is create a new session, right? And I, you can see I've got a bunch of sessions that I already had run. I've got a bunch on here that I use for our remote alumni talks. I've got some that Michael and some other people and I were testing earlier. Uh, so I'm going to click on Create Session right there. Give it a name. So we'll call it Crazy Day Session. Uh, spell it right. Uh, there is a telephone number on there that you can send out to people if they don't have a computer they can listen in via their telephone uh, and at least get the audio or if they have a computer that doesn't have speakers they can I would imagine click on the link to get the presentation and use their phone to get in on the video and, and uh, collaborate that way. Can I ask you right away? Pete? Yep. Would one, would one um, paste that entire phone number, 10 digit phone, or 11 digit phone number plus the PIN? Yes. That's the access code or something? Yes. Okay. Yep. Okay, thanks. I haven't actually tested it, but I'm guessing it works. Uh, guest access means that other people that aren't invited, I guess, can connect if they have the, the link. Uh, you can specify what the guest role is. I would imagine for our purposes for teaching a class, a guest role would be a participant. When I've set it up for remote speakers and they're going to be doing, I'm setting up the talk, but they're going to be the ones presenting. I'll set them up as a presenter, and then there's also a moderator, which I think has the ability to allow or disallow people to connect. I'm not sure of the exact details. There's also over here a guest link right next to that, and then you can copy it with the little copy dealy next to it. That will copy a link to your clipboard that you can then email out to people. Now, I'm talking about all of this based on my view as academic staff, I'm not teaching any classes, and I don't have access to this in uh, Canvas, right? It's Canvas. Um, Stephanie was showing me she does have a link in there, and I think if you op if you start this from within Canvas, I think it may there may be things like it automatically invites your students. You have a list of people to invite, things like that. I'm not sure exactly of the details, and we can poke around at, at the end if you want. Um, but a lot of this should be the same. Uh, so I'm going to copy this link here. Did yes, Michael. Oh. Sorry. I'll send it to everyone and anybody that wants to get on. This will be a good test. Oh, but turn your volume down. <laughs> yeah, turn your volume down, or we'll have a lot of feedback because everybody's in the same room. Uh, I'm going to send it to Michael first because the whisk mail mailing list was slow today, and we may not. I can't type and talk at the same time. We may not be able to get it out to everybody right now. Um, so I'm going to just throw the link in there. Send it to Michael. I'll send it to everyone also, but you may not get it right away. Good. Well, that was just to Michael. That wasn't through the list served to everybody. We'll try it. So I just sent it to everyone. And I'm going to go back to that panel. Okay, there's some other things about the event that you can set. You can have a start date and time. You can have an end date and time, or you can specify no end. In other words, it just stays open all the time. Uh, whether it's a repeat session, I suppose you could set one up and have it repeat weekly, or I, I don't know. I haven't actually delved into the details of what that is. Uh, early entry, if you want students or other people to be able to connect to this session before the actual start time of the event. In this case, it's 15 minutes. Uh, apparently, you can provide a description. Then there's something in the session settings down below, which you had, I had to click on that little arrow. Here's the details. I had to click on the little down arrow to get to those. Uh, what is the default attendee role? We had that up above. Do I want to allow recording downloads? You can record sessions in here, and I'll show you how to do that in a little bit. Uh, do you want the ability for people to download MP4 copies of those recordings, or do you want them to have to get into the Blackboard utility to view them? Uh, you can do both. I usually allow recording downloads. 
Uh, there's some other stuff in here, anonymized chat messages. I'm guessing that depends on the, the context as to whether you would want to actually have people with their names on those or not. Uh, moderator permissions. Participants can share audio, share video, post chat messages, draw on whiteboard and files. You may or may not want them to do that if you're using that. Um, and then whether it's a private chat or not. So these are lots of things. I, I haven't really experimented with a lot of them, but most of them are pretty self-explanatory. I'm going to save this now. Just a comment? Yes. Allowing folks to download the um, recorded sessions is probably a good idea because not everyone's going to have connectivity at home. They right. go to a coffee shop or a place they have a connection, download it, and watch it when they get home. So Correct. You can make it easier for them. So I have a quick question yep. which you may or may not have any answer to. Um, can you share your screen please? We're going to get there. Okay. Yes. And I've got some tricks for that too because when you're sharing your screen, you can't see the context of the collaborate. In other words, if someone's asking a question in the chat or if they're asking a question online face to face, you either see your PowerPoint or the chat, but there's a way you can get back and forth between them, and I'll we'll get to that. And, and also, on that note, uh, if you get to it when you get to it, but if multiple people can present at the, in the same session, I would I, that I don't know. I do not know the answer to that. I'm thinking of this more for like face to face, like a, a uh, not Slack, Zoom. Zoom, yeah, like a like a video chat, Google chat, that sort of thing for a small group or for a one to many, where you've got one person that's doing lecture. In terms of lots of people, you could probably have lots of people present, but not all at the same. In other words, you'd have to one person would have to stop presenting, then the other could start. I mean, that would be something, I think, where you would change the default guest role to be a presenter, and then anyone who connects would be able to share their screen. And I think the default role as a participant, you cannot share your screen. I think that's the case. Okay, so at the very top up here, there's a link called Join Session that's uh, visible to me as the creator of the session. So we're going to go in there and join it. take a second and this will be interesting I, I've tested this before we had all our classes online and before all of the universities had their classes online blackboard could be interesting when this you know everybody's all using it at once we'll see I I hope that it's all good and Michael's on there too so uh, okay so I'm going to share my audio there's a little microphone down at the bottom down here there's a little uh, can you all see that uh, there's a microphone thing. There's also a video thing. So I'm going to share my video. Oh, you can't find a camera. What do you mean you can't find a camera? Yeah, what do you mean? Mine said that today too. Huh? Mine said that today too. That's interesting. It could earlier. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, let's see here. Are you? Am I what? Does it think you're? No, because I've done it connected through there before. Okay should just work. It should just work. Thanks, last <laughs> <laughs> let, me, let me try it again. Otherwise, I'll restart Chrome. It's possible it could be messed up with that. Oh, okay, yeah, just a point. So Chrome and Firefox will allow you to do, bring up PowerPoint and other things to share the screen. You can't do it in Safari. That's, no, that's Michael. It said it couldn't find one. <laughs> All right, I'm going to close out of here real quick. This is, I guess, what the live demos are like. I'm going to restart Chrome and see if that's... I'm not sure I like that. All right, let's try that again. This did work earlier, right, Michael? You can, you can verify that it actually did work. We were doing this at home the other night, too. And another thing, when you bring up the session, when you first start it, by default, it's an hour long. Right.
Pete, I can't get in your session unless you invite me. Is that what it works? I don't know how it's going to work. This is really not good. All right. Um, well, I'm going to try and disconnect from this and see what happens. Just it says it doesn't have access to share my video. I can hear Michael online. <laughs> I wonder if it's because I've got more than one going here. So, yes, Dan. While you're doing this, let's, I mean, maybe a conversation about those of us who are teaching. Uh, if, if we've got an enormous class, perhaps um, allowing other students to share video and uh, audio may not be the greatest idea, but. I think there's actually a limit of five video and audio chats. Okay. If you're doing one to many, there can be, I think, up to 500 people that join to watch the session. But I think in terms of sharing audio and video and like a conference type of thing, I think with this tool, there's a limit of five. Okay, so, uh, look, so we should be looking for people raising their hands to ask questions. Like we should let the class know in terms of the email that we send out to everyone saying, we're gonna be doing this on Blackboard now, so if you have any questions, you know, fire away through um, the raising your hand in the chat feature mm -hmm. of this? Probably, yeah. Uh, I'm sort of half listening. I'm restarting my Mac because I don't I, know what's I, going I, on. I, I, I mean, this would be, be a discussion amongst people who are here. The other thing to point out, Canvas um, does uh, discussion sections, or discussion sessions on uh, Canvas. Uh, and I'll do office hours, like for the 100 level course, I'll do office hours on Canvas. And so if you're, um, it's a good way of, of maintaining a record of office hours and uh, you know, people can ask questions, you can upload pictures to your responses uh, and so forth. So check out the discussion uh, feature on Canvas as well. It's, it's not as real time, you'll be able to give lectures, but. I don't know if anyone else is maybe you were talking about Slack. I've been using Slack for exactly that kind of program. I've liked it so far. Okay. So that'd be another one that's there a little bit coming into that. How many Oh, this person's Slack. I don't know. Are you subscribed or anything or do you is it a free? It's free. Oh. Yeah. This is as much as I've used it in the class. I think I've got fifteen participants in my Slack channel. Oh, okay. I think there are for pay options of it, and they have things where your history goes back farther, you can yeah. stuff like that. Uh, Canvas for discussion, like if you just open a discussion section, it, it just maintains that. So, you know, if somebody asks a question about, you know, explain GSR balance to me again, you can just say, please refer to the earlier response. And, So we're waiting. I'll, I'll bring up something real quick. I uh, gave a survey out to my 340 students this morning, asking them on other things that they had technological ability and good internet connections and everything else. I also asked them if they preferred to hold class on the regular schedule or just like a series of asynchronous videos posted that they could do in their own time. And the response was overwhelmingly in favor of posting class at scheduled times. Mm -hmm. Everyone felt that they would benefit more from having the rigid schedule than if they didn't do that, they felt they would probably get behind. Yeah. So sure. I don't know if that's going to be the same with the other groups, other cohorts, but at least for our juniors, they really want to keep class going at specified times. Right. And the, what um, Tim just alluded to, that's going to be included in an email that I'll be sending out to uh, colleagues later on this afternoon. His questionnaire, if you want to revise it, send us a Word document so you can revise it for your class just to get some sense of what students are going to prefer so you can tailor what you do. But it has to, you know, ultimately, it has to work for you and is recognized. Do as best you can for the scenario. You may not be able to meet everything, but as long as you understand what the issues are, you can try to accommodate as many people as possible. Does okay. anyone know if the university is, because in, in my lecture room, I have this podium up front which has a lecture capture option on it, which I've been investigating this afternoon and trying to figure out how to use that. I think I know how now. Uh, you can live stream and capture it. 
but I want to know if I can go over there at the time that my class is scheduled and expect that the room is mine. Does anybody know? Have we heard anything like that? From some of those, I think there's 42 or so such rooms on campus that have these. I don't know if they're scheduled. I mean, they're already scheduled, so I don't think they could necessarily change it. But I haven't heard anything. Yeah. Yeah. It would be the same thing in here, too, if we use this room. Yeah, maybe so. Yeah, but I was thinking, you know, a person could go in and decide, I want to just do all my next eight lectures in two hours in that room. And I, you know, I want to be able to know whether I can assert my right to say, no, 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 I'm holding my class here now. And you can't do that. Um, so I guess I'll have to ask somebody else. I wonder if anybody here. Okay. I don't have an answer to that. So, Michael, I'm in now, and I'm actually sharing my video. You can see the little lower corner down here. Oh, yeah. There we are. Um, so, a couple of things to show. So along the bottom, there's a, a little microphone thing where you can share your audio or not. There's a little camera looking thing where you can select to share your video or not, which was what I was having trouble with before. And there's a little thing where you can raise your hand. So your students, when you're teaching, so I should be have Michael joining on here now too. He's, he hasn't shared his video yet, but um, there's like eight people in the room. There are two people. Did anybody get the email from me yet? Yeah, it's probably going through Whisk. It's going to be a while. Uh, Michael's joining. So let's see. The, the main parts I wanted to show you, there is this place where you can raise your hand, and then the presenter will get a notification that the hand was raised. Michael just raised his hand. So we'll get rid of that. So that way, if you're presenting, and I think it does, when we were messing around last night, when someone raised their hand, it audibly let you know something happened. Right. Yes, Dan? Can you fall through that? Like, have, like raise your hand, and what happens? <coughs> Why do you raise your hand? There's a button the see that right there. Yeah. OK. How do you get in? I'm actually going to raise your hand. I've got my own here. Oh, yeah. Well. <laughs> if Michael raises his hand, and I'm presenting here, let me just find where I'm raise my hand. There we go. That's right in the end. Now, I, I didn't hear anything because it might be because I'm plugged into the video. It, it may have come through the speakers. But when we were doing it last night and Michael initiated a conference and I raised my hand, I could hear on his end there was a, some a audible break, like a thing that told him that someone raised their hand. Um, like maybe text something? Like let's, we'll get there. Okay. So in the lower right-hand corner of this panel, there's a little left-facing purple arrow. That's where you can get at things like chat. So in the, the leftmost icon down there is a little bubble. That's for chat. So I can say, I can type. So that's basically a little chat room. And I'm guessing if someone types in there, you may hear a similar audible notification. Uh, that you would have thrown hand raised. They can get into that thing unless they raise their hand. And Not uh, uh, no. Raising their the raising of your hand is independent from the chat. Raising their hand is I think just to get your attention as a presenter. Mm -hmm. This is the chat. The next one over is the list of attendees, so you can see these people are attending. The third one over with the little arrow pointing out is where you can share content. So in this case, I am going to share, you can share a blank whiteboard where you can draw, um, it's kind of awkward with a mouse, but um, that's an option. Uh, you can type text in there. Um, anyways, there's that option. Um, what I'm going to do is share an application or my screen. You can share your entire screen or you can share an application window. And in this case, I'm going to share my PowerPoint. That is my intro to Unix PowerPoint. So I'm going to share that. And now Michael should be seeing a copy of my PowerPoint window. In fact, you can see it in the background over here that I'm sharing that. Now I'm going to take my PowerPoint and turn it into a slideshow which means I can see and control my slideshow. But now I can't see my present my chat anymore, the, the Blackboard. If you do on an Apple, it's app, uh, Command Tab. On a Windows machine, it's Alt Tab. You can cycle between. You're not seeing that up there. Yeah. OK, so Michael can see the chat window. So maybe if somebody says something, if I put my hand up right now, will you see anything on the screen? I'm going to change this. This is what it looks like on my end. And when I do Apple, 
tab, I get Pat's still doing it on my screen. Um, All this that presented. Yeah, I'm trying to. I could use two computers, right? One to look at the hands going up, and one to join my presentation. If I have two, two laptops. You could, or you could connect, I suppose, with the phone. Okay. Yeah. I'll call. Because it's using. Because it's using the presenter mode here, I think it's because I'm projecting, but you're not seeing what I'm seeing, but I can switch on my machine between Chrome, which shows me the collaborate thing. It's really too bad. I need to get rid of, uh, how do I quickly get out of presenter mode? Well, that'll get me out of the, out of the, uh, the slideshow. Are you mirroring screens? Yeah. I am mirroring screens, but it's still using, I believe I'm mirroring screens. So I am mirroring, yeah. Um, there's a way to turn off presenter mode, but I don't remember where you do that. Can, can a person watching the PowerPoint record it? It's, he can also record it. I can record it. So um, they can yeah, they review can it later. later. Yeah. Oh, you mean immediately review it? Well, you have to wait till it's done. So you wait till it's done. And then he can allow it to be downloaded by anyone. I'm wondering for the labs if I can present a case study. Right. And they can record it. And then they can, they can answer individual questions for that case study. Uh, as, a, as a lab, if I'm doing it, being able to go over it again. Right, so he can, if he wanted to do a whole lecture, yeah. he can do it, record it, uh -huh. and then students can come back, download it, and review it themselves. Okay, that's, that's right. doable. That is doable. <clears throat> Somewhere in here, there's a way where I can turn, tell it not to use presenter mode, but I don't quite. But that, maybe that's not the. We could. It'd be easier to demonstrate that on one on one because then you can see what I'm seeing on my screen. But anyways, you can share that and you can use Alt and or uh, Command Tab to to go between the PowerPoint and the uh, Collaborate screen that you see on your screen. Pete, if you want to go to non-presenter mode, you just go to Slide Setup, you go to Slideshow, and then look for the uh, the Setup Slideshow right there and choose the second. This one right there, yeah, yep. it'll give you a window that you can resize. And gotcha. Like that. So let's. Play that from the start. Okay, so there you're seeing what I'm seeing, and except wait, 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 what did you just do there? Uh, we're all going to run into the same issue. I know that. I understand that. Um, Grant, what did you just say? You go to slideshow. You go to slideshow setup, and you choose uh, the second bullet, which lets you basically get a scalable window as opposed to taking up the whole screen. And then you can select that window inside of Blackboard to be what's displayed, and so you basically can go back and forth between the two windows. And then you can advance a slide in Presenter or in, in PowerPoint, and it'll advance automatically in Blackboard. Does that make sense? I, when I did that, though, the PowerPoint disappeared from my Blackboard. You got to go to the application screen and select the application now. It's a different application. Okay. There we go. Yep. And okay, so I guess that gets around the problem I was talking about before. But you still can't advance it from within Blackboard. You got to advance it out here. Right. So, so if I put my hand up. <laughs> now, one thing about here. the PowerPoint function or sharing the PowerPoint thing that I've discovered that sounds like a, a it seems like kind of a limitation. It'd be nice if you could, since you're not going to be at the screen and you can't point at stuff, it'd be nice if you could use a stylus or a mouse to draw on the, the Blackboard screen showing PowerPoint, but you can't. So unless there's a way around it that I haven't discovered yet, it's, it's going to be kind of hard to point at stuff on there. It is. You can use the mouse, but yeah, like you say, if you're using a stylus, that's not... I'm not even sure if the mouse cursor shows up for the viewer. Yeah, move it around on the screen, I don't see anything. I don't think the cursor goes through. <laughs> oh, yes, it is. I see it. Is it? Okay. All right. Cursor goes through. Good. Okay. The only other thing that I wanted to show is in the hamburger sort of menu in the upper left up here, 
<laughs> this is where you can record. So I can start recording right now. Now it's going to begin recording this session. And then where do you find that file? And that file will be shown. Um, it takes a few moments. But... Yeah, it won't be there to begin with. That's not. I may have to actually end the session before it shows up, but in this, it'll be in a hamburger looking menu like this when you go into Blackboard and it has the list of all the sessions. Like when I first started it and it had all the different ones, one of them is a list of sessions, the next one down is a list of recordings that you've made. And I can't say as a user how you would access that from, as not a presenter, but if you didn't create the session, I'm not sure how you go in and get at it afterwards. Like how could I, if you had recorded our thing last night right. when we were testing, how do I get that? I think when you go to the sessions that you were, just go to sessions, I think. It should show up in there. It should be there. Right? Okay, so I may have Prior a session. chance for that. And does that record only the presenter or everything and everyone that's... It present? will record um, the presenter, and if people are talking back and forth, it'll switch to their view. So like if Michael started talking on the recording, you would see the video switch to him. And then when I started talking, the video would switch back to me. Right, so if you have a class of 300 people and you're trying to do this, I guess you would have lots of little windows there, but if someone started talking, asking a question, question working, you would see their face. I don't think you could have 300 okay. faces, though. I think there's a limit of five in this tool for that. But they could all, but they all, they would all be able to speak up, I guess. Well, they can all raise their hand and participate in the chat. I don't think they can. Is that the camera come. operating on their computer that's yes. putting their face up? Yes. So computers, laptops, they don't have cameras, that wouldn't work. Right, they can still see. They can still hear. view your talk. And hear. Yeah. And they can participate through this chat down here as well. Yeah. So, Dan, you look like you're going to ask a question. No, I have a question, sorry. Okay. Um, that's, I think, really all I've got. You can go in and play with it. If anybody wants to set up a session and shoot me the link, I'll be happy to be a guinea pig, log on, and, and test things with you. Mark and I were doing that last night, um, or send it to anybody. Um, if you run into a problem and you're not sure, I'll be in tomorrow and Friday. We can talk about it. I'll be in. I'm planning at this point of being in next week to help, and we'll, we'll do what we can. I mean, this is kind of uh, brand new for everybody. So. Uh, and we're still allowed to like do everything here, right? So I mean, if during class we have a problem. Assuming nothing changes, we can still just kind of run to you. Yes. Yes. Text me. I'll come down. Um, this can be done from wherever too. I mean, if right. if it gets to the point where you're you're home or you're sick or quarantined or whatever, this you can do this from home as well. Um, I know Grant had talked about possibly having you know teaching from home and having his students view it here. Of course, that's probably not going to happen now because we're not going to have any classes here after Friday. But uh, do they have to be on the weekend for this? No. No. Okay. Um, so if only five people are allowed to share audio and video, could you have your students say don't share, but then if they like raise your hand and you call on them, then you can have them like click to share their audio and video I then? The answer, I don't know the answer to that question. Yeah. Okay. Could you have that session thing again, the session settings? That's really how it works. Face-to-face. Yeah. -face. I think I need to tell you. You know, the student, the student this one, Michael? Yeah. So participants can share with you all you know. yeah. I think you can, I think you can have everyone sharing audio and you can mute everyone uh, and then like selectively unmute people. Is that this or is it Zoom where you can do that? I, you know, I've been on these things where there's like 30 people. Yeah, I don't know. I, I seem to recall from a list of various uh, remote access type things like this that this particular client had a limit of five. Okay. But I don't remember. I, I think I sent that link to you with that table. Yeah, I don't. I, I don't have it on the top of my head. How about audio video settings? Just click on that for a second. Okay, it's just for That's you. for me, yeah. Notification settings. Oh, here. You can. Uh, that's why it wasn't dinging. That's why it wasn't dinging, yeah. Let me try to connect quickly if you want to see it. Yeah, I wonder if you clicked on browser pop up in notification. I'm trying, it's not letting really I guess we could have a class chat group. 
This is by no means the only way to do this. This is a way we figured out it mostly there. You heard that little thing. That's what happens when someone raises their hand. So, so if you wanted to set up a chat, Slack's one way of doing that, but Canvas is a way of doing that as well, just set up a discussion. Right. Yeah. And it would work in it would work in the chat over here as well. Yeah. But this is probably overkill if that's all you're trying to do. Pete, I would need to be able to flip the classroom for part of the class because I do the weather discussions and they have to they're supposed to conduct those. So can I flip the classroom to one of the students to do a weather discussion? Sure. You'd have to make them a, a presenter. Michael, are you still connected? And I don't know if it's going to work from your phone. I don't know if you can present anything from your phone. But well, I think from this, role, you think? I think from this attendee list, you can change what role they are. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll add real quick for those who have larger classes. The help site says that only up to 25 attendees can call into a session. Telephone. Hmm. So can I don't know if this if there's a limit? Who wants to be a guinea pig on this? I'll do it. I have my laptop on. Okay. You haven't gotten the email from earlier yet, right? No. Yeah, Mike, do you want to send it to her? So I think over here you can change your experience, make presenter. So I can make Michael a presenter. I'll wait until seven. Yes, Zoe. Can you just do a quick poll? Um, how many people think Pi Day Friday is a good idea? Who knows? Yeah, so I'll just do it in two days. How many people are in favor? Looks like a no. Zero. Okay. Yeah, let's let's yeah. do Pi Day like Okay. Yeah. Like having the solstice party in February, we can have oh, Pi Day. Two times Pi. Two Pi Day. Yeah. yeah. Two Pi R. Two Pi Day. Yeah. June 28th. That yeah. works. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. 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 Steph is here. I'm going to change her to be a presenter. So she should now be able to share her screen or a PowerPoint or something with me, Greg, answering your question. Okay. Yeah. 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 For telephone dialing. It's okay, so now we've got now we've got her, and that's this is what I see. Okay. So they would they would need to get it in some kind of prepared format. Well, they could still do things like uh, they could share a web browser Pivotal and things like that. They could get on Pivotal and put that. Yeah, in they could that. share a web browser and, okay. and use that too. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I just raised my hand. Um, I yeah, you raise your hand and Michael gets or Steph gets notified that you raise your hand. Oh, you can't see the I didn't screen. get anything. So I, I maybe didn't. not. Who knows? Oh, but I can. So if they're doing a weather oh, discussion, I can't really interrupt and say, well, I had to leave the screen right. to, to see that. It's going to be you share what you learn. It's going to be a lot of trial right. error, I'm sure. Right. Yes, David. Should, should we set up times of you for dry runs next week, or should we like plan on another one of these sessions next Wednesday? Or sure. Okay. Yeah. Either, either of those works. I mean, I'm, I'm happy to help as much as I can in any way that I can. Thanks for. Thanks. I hope it's useful. I mean, it's a little scatterbrained, little you know, flying by the seat of my pants, and of course not working wouldn't help, but.
it's yeah. good to see that it's, you can just do this. And we'll see how it works as it scales. I'm cautiously optimistic what we'll see. Right, and the other thing to consider, not be a negative or party group on this or a Debbie Downer or whatever the expression is, but given that this is something that's not a UW resource, and probably lots of campuses use this, it'll be interesting to see how it, the internet connectivity is going to be maintained. More people using this probably than it's ever been used before. But by stocking. By the way, to exit the session, it's that little hamburger menu in the upper left that you saw, and you say leave session, and it'll ask you how was your audio, and you can just skip that. I think I might, I might be able to show you. So, oh, that's right. There's going to be audio on it, so they'll hear you talking. They'll definitely hear you talking. And that's the, that's the microphone in your computer. Correct. I'm going to go back into Collaborate Ultra, and from that, s <clears throat> so now in this listing here, if I go to the hamburger menu on the upper left, you can see the sessions is what I'm in now. There's also recordings, and now we can show the recording that I did of our session just now, and the audio Maybe should come. That's the first one you did at the very beginning, but then you start restarting it, right? or does it? Does no, it this again? is this is in the middle. Recording right now, and now it's going to begin recording oh, this yeah. session. Good audio. I guess that if you do this through Canvas, probably like a map file will be shown. Um, I just paused it. Uh, I mean, my guess is that I mean, there will probably be somewhere in Canvas that it shows up. That you can then it's possible. I don't. I have. I don't have the Canvas view. We could look on Steph's computer if you wanted to see what it looks like from in there. I'll just give it a shot. Yeah, because I yeah, okay. I don't have the same view that you guys do in Canvas. I mean, I can see that I had like an MDS purchasing class that I took. It looks That's very similar. Yeah. It looks the same, you just, you just have your class there, you can create session, and then the same menu with the event details pops up. Okay. So if we do this, uh, like a follow-up meeting on this, it would also right. be great. You know, I've been here for a while. People that use Canvas a lot, maybe just sharing some quick ways to set things up, that would be useful. Mm -hmm. I could, yeah, if you want, we could. So one, when I'm, one second, real quick. While I'm viewing this video in here, that hamburger menu also has download recording. So here's where I could download it as an MP4 file. Okay. It'll just download it over here. Then you can send it any way you want. Right. Okay. Students can download it too. Yeah, correct. Okay, Greg, I'm sorry. No, what I was going to say is I have a small class. Yes. So I want to do a dry run of this tomorrow. I want you to be there when I do the dry run. Okay. You know, I'm saying the rest of the faculty might want to show up, sit in the back of the room, and watch how the dry run goes, so we, we understand the kinds of problems that are going to be unearthed with yeah. the students. Not a bad idea. Yeah. What's well, that? 120. 14. I should be able to be there. We had a meeting scheduled about the robot lecture at one, but I think that's not happening. Yeah, we don't need to meet tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions? I'm available if you want to stop by my office. If this was too fast or didn't cover something you want to try, I just figured it'd be good to get that much. Everybody's well, seen it now. Everybody sort of knows where things are a little bit. Play with it and let's, good luck. Let's see how it goes. Right. There'll be an email that's going to be going out to all faculty, you know, the university, the LSSS departments to come up with a continuity of instruction plan and a work in a group for each department. Uh, Greg's asked me to chair that, and Grant's on it, Greg's on it, and a few other folks. Um, just asking for some information, email address if you want to give a secondary email address, if you don't mind doing that, that's just for departmental use as well as a cell phone number that we can have. We can all, it'll be shared among faculty, um, just so we can contact each other. For your classes, think about someone who can serve as a backup, if for some reason you get ill, or that class is going to continue, identify that person, uh, have conversations with them. And then that email will ask you to sort of send information back to us by Monday. Uh, it takes a little bit longer, understood, that we have to get this to LS by Friday. It's a Thursday afternoon, so we're ready to send it by Friday morning. Next week. Oh, a week oh. from. A week, right. Friday. Right. right. Okay. But if you, if you already identify someone that you fill, that, fill them for your course and you, have, you can answer those questions, send that information as soon as possible. There's also some things about just basic the context and the, what our principles that we're going to be operating on. Both for instruction, for research, for the office. It's a draft, but if you have comments you want to add to it, this is part of the plan we're putting together. So feel free to edit and add things when it gets rubbish. Say that. If you're sending that to faculty, please include Tim yeah. also because he's teaching. You he missed some of the earlier emails this week because we didn't think about that. Okay. Um, and thank you, Michael. A, for we, we ought to make a new. <coughs> 
email link instead of just AOS faculty, but one that includes AOS instructors and faculty. We can certainly, yeah, I can do that. Oh, Maybe yeah. you can do that. Yeah. 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 Instructors at AOS. That was yeah. the idea. Thank you, Michael, for thinking of this a week ago. And because uh, I did a lot of research figuring out how to make this happen, we'd be all figuring this out and going crazy today if, if we hadn't thought about that ahead of time. So yeah. thanks for, for the show. Yeah, this, thank you. Thanks. this may be a, uh, a way the future is for this new dystopia we're in. <laughs> Well, one thing I wonder how sure. long this is going to last. It could be all next week. Yeah. Yeah. The next few weeks are going to prove the value of face-to-face -face lectures, that's for sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We'll never hear again yeah. about, oh, let's go to all these moves and all this. I think yeah. the next few weeks are going to prove the value of science to our leaders, too, yeah, because when you sit around and <laughs> ignore it so that you don't look bad, hopefully that doesn't right. help. Well, well, I don't know. We'll see. Maybe it'll, <laughs> maybe it'll